Welcome to Learning Containers, a video companion series to Docker for developers. Before we dive into working with containers, let us get a bit of context for exactly what containers are and how they can help us. At their heart, containerization is a technology that is meant to solve one big problem, deploying a piece of software reliably and repeatably. No matter what software you deploy, it will have dependencies, and those dependencies can be the bane of any developer's existence. Different operating systems have different libraries and tools, and each of those different versions of libraries can have different capabilities. This is not a problem exclusively for desktop applications. Web applications themselves have dependencies. What version of PHP do you require Apache? What version of extensions do you support? Even if we as web developers don't worry about exactly which version of libc is installed on a server, our applications still have some sort of dependency. For us, containers allow us to define a deployment environment down to the exact installation image and know that our application will work fine. With this in mind, containers step on the toes of two different technologies, configuration management and virtualization. There are a few different ways that we as developers deploy our application to bare metal servers or to a virtual machine. With a bare metal server, we install an operating system directly onto the hardware and then install our software directly inside that operating system. We manage all of this and our processes have full access to the hardware. This was pretty standard 10 years ago. Most companies may do by scaling horizontally, especially when it came to web servers, or just replace those web servers with bigger ones. Need more computing power? Throw another server into the cluster or replace it. Computer hardware never stands still, and it was not long before it was commonplace to have multi-core CPUs and many gigabytes of RAM at a pretty reasonable price. As horsepower increased, we ended up with more and more idle resources. Virtualization allowed IT departments and big computer warehouses like Amazon to install multiple copies of an operating system, and thereby multiple copies of software, onto these very large pieces of hardware. Companies could buy fewer, but larger servers and run more virtualized machines on them. Today, most people deploy to a virtualized environment, whether they know it or not. Many companies don't even look at co-location anymore. They just purchase space on Amazon or Google or DigitalOcean. If they have hardware, they may run their own virtualization cluster using something like OpenStack. It's a waste of resources to have huge multi-core CPUs sit there idle 90% of the day. Virtualization comes at a cost though, and that cost is additional resources that are taken up by the virtualized operating systems and the cost of virtualizing the hardware. While we can run multiple operating systems on our own hardware, each operating system takes up its own resources in addition to the software running inside of these virtual machines. There is also a performance hit when it comes to accessing the virtualized hardware and your input and output can suffer as a result. But what if we could get the benefits of this better utilization that virtual machines give us without the wasted resources of 10 installations of CentOS? Containerization is a prime alternative to virtualization. Much like virtualization, containers allow developers and system administrators to define an environment and isolate it from the rest of the processes running on the hardware. Containers, however, are not virtualization, but a way to isolate a process. These processes run in the host operating system just like anything else, but are segregated away into their own little universe. They're ignorant of what goes on around them. Containers do not run a full virtualized operating system and therefore are much leaner on resources. That means more processes on a single piece of hardware, which means less overall hardware and better utilization. Applications all have dependencies. In this course, our sample application will have PHP 7, MySQL 5.7, and Nginx, and all of the dependencies that those software packages need as well. In a traditional IT environment, many shops have a collection of installation scripts that handle this. They can range, at worst case, from a piece of paper with some instructions written out on it, to configuration management tools like Ansible or Puppet. Configuration management's job is to look at a server and see if it matches a defined template. Is PHP 7 installed? If not, install it. Do we have all the package manager repositories set up? If not, set them up. Do we have all the users with all their SSH keys? If not, create them. Configuration management also allows new machines to be brought online quickly. If you need a new web server, you physically turn on the new machine, point the configuration management software at it, and it will install everything it needs on the new machine. 
Containerizing our application allows us to no longer worry about the many issues of configuration management for our application. Container images are pre-configured to contain everything that we need. Imagine you want to buy a car. By using the configuration management approach, you go to the auto parts store, purchase a manual, and all of the parts. You then follow the manual step by step until your parts match the car that you want. By using the containerization approach, we go to the dealership and just buy a car that's already built. We as developers and system administrators don't worry about putting the car together ourselves, and if we need a second car, we just go buy one that looks exactly the same. We don't need to check to see if PHP 7 is installed anymore because our containers contain PHP 7 because that's how it was built at the factory. If we need to bring a new web server online, we simply start a new container that matches the old one. Need a new MySQL secondary server? Start a container image that's identical to the ones that are already running. We can leave the configuration management to worrying about things that we can't containerize, such as installing our container images, setting up users, and detailing server security measures. The configuration management can stop worrying about our application's dependencies and focus more closely on the server. Docker and newer containerization technologies have drastically lowered the barrier for running these containers. Previously, setting up and running something like Linux containers or chroots or BSD jails took quite a bit of work on the system side and were much harder to replicate on development machines. Docker, much like Vagrant, provides a wrapper around these processes and makes it easier for non-system admins to define containers, build them, share them, and deploy them. Throughout this course, we will take a look at using containers to make our development lives easier, no matter what our project is. While in this course we will focus mainly on PHP programs, the lessons will be applicable to any language. So now that we understand containers a little bit better, let's dive in and install Docker on our local machines.